Hello, dear viewers of Dr. Shoshanian's blog. This is Hypertension X Patients Club. We're glad you're with us. Today, in this short informative video, I will tell you how to measure blood pressure correctly, so that you could measure your pressure and get correct results. Also, so that you could double-check the readings if needed. Well, we'll take the most simple device. I explained in the corresponding video why a simple device is the way to go if you want to measure your blood pressure correctly. So if you're interested, go watch it. This young man is our rehab physician. He agreed to be our model for measuring blood pressure. So we'll measure his pressure now. So you start by putting your phonendoscope around your neck for convenience, so it wouldn't get in the way. And then you put the cuff on your arm. We'll take blood pressure measurement now. That is, first I'll show you how to do it for another person, and then I'll show you how to measure it for yourself. You'll hear doctors saying your arm should be at heart level. That's not correct, because the pressure is constantly maintained inside the vessels, regardless of the position your hand is in. The body is designed so that it always maintains pressure everywhere, otherwise there will be no blood supply. So your hand can be relaxed in a sitting position. Look at him sitting. His posture is fine. You need to remember to instruct the person to relax, so that his shoulders are relaxed, the head is straight, not tilted, he is looking forward. Then we take the hand, just above the elbow, to make it convenient for you to put the cuff on. Pull it tighter. This arrow you see here means nothing. The thing is to remember that these tubes should be either on this side or on that one, as you prefer, so that they don't get in the way here, because you'll be putting your phonendoscope against your skin right in this spot, which if these tubes are here, they'll simply be in your way. Now relax your hand, take this. So when you're measuring someone else's BP, you need to tell them, hold on to this thing. Hold it so that I could see the dial. Here. That person would hold the dial and you'll measure it comfortably. You put this thing on, no need to push the ear pieces in. You will hear everything quite well anyway. Another important point. They say one needs to measure against bare skin. That's not true either. That is, if the fabric is thin, a shirt, let's say, a thin sweater or some kind of jumper, you'll hear quite well through it. Well, of course, through a coat, a fur coat or some rain jacket or some kind of thick sweater, it'll be difficult to hear. Otherwise, you'll do just fine. A thin shirt is even better. In fact, it works like an extra membrane. So we apply it here. Be sure to hold your thumb down here and grab the elbow. You'll see how I grabbed his elbow, as if I'm squeezing it, that's it. And then I start pumping. We pump it to roughly 260. And then we begin measuring by releasing it a little. We slowly let the air out. Pay attention here. We'll need a close-up. Hold it so that the viewers can see it well. Now I'm measuring his pressure. You'll see that the arrow begins to twitch. You can't tell the pressure by the arrow yet. The arrow begins to give the first twitches at about 160. Now his real pressure is 120 by 80, but the arrow will give the first twitch at 160, roughly. These are the pre-pulse waves coming. These can't be registered as your pressure, they just need to be skipped. When you hear the first powerful blow, that's the moment we start measuring. So I pumped it up to 260 and slowly let it out. Here, look, the arrow starts to twitch, see? And this is the first blow, that's it. And at 80 it stopped. That is, the very first pulses are not strong. 
вот. Here comes the strong one. That is, that's the way you'll hear it come. There will be two or three blows, sometimes one. This number depends on the elasticity of blood vessels. Young people have elastic vessels, so that's why their first waves are more audible. But you should pay attention to the first really powerful blow. Now let's look at the technique of measuring your own pressure. So if you take your pressure yourself, putting the cuff on correctly is important. Put it on. To put it on right, you must first widen it before putting it on. It'll go easier. Now pull it up, a bit higher, and tighten it. Tighten it up a bit more. Now put the ear pieces in. The ear piece tubes can be twisted to align them properly. Put them in. Now push the sensor against your skin. Yes, right there. Tuck it a bit underneath. The way you apply it, and he's done it right, so that the sensor goes a bit under the rim of the cuff. That's it. You don't need to hold it. It'll be kept in place by the cuff. Now put the dial in your lap, close the flap and pump it. Let's do it again. I'll adjust it a little. Again, when you measure blood pressure for someone else, they can wear the cuff higher, yes. But when you measure it for yourself, keep it lower. Tighten it up, make sure it holds, and then you stick the sensor membrane under the rim. That's it. You put your hand on your knee and relax. Pump it up to 260 and then slowly let it out. You'll hear it at 160. Little bumps, you hear that, right? Now the big ones are coming. You feel that, right? Basically, that's it really. When the blows stopped, the big ones are tangibly strong usually, and some minor pulses can continue. In his case, it's 120 by 80. And it's over. You take it off and fold it. So now, the interpretation of this data. Here, take it. The interpretation. Roughly speaking, when the pressure is normal, you measured it, and it's normal, everything is good. The norm, we examined the concept of the norm in a separate video, I mentioned this. If you're interested, you can watch it, find it in our blog, and educate yourselves. So, what about high blood pressure? Well, for example, it's 180 by 100. And the main thing to remember is when, let's say, you measured it and it's 180 by 100, no need to get scared. Because high figures, and doctors know this, they must be double-checked. Three times minimum. So you see 180 by 100, for example. So, rest a little, walk around, calm down, and in five minutes measure your BP again. Or in three minutes, as soon as you calmed down. Feel free to get some tea, then do it again, and then once more, exactly the same measurement. And the average that you'll come down to will be your average pressure. Second, people with arrhythmia need to measure it three times, especially if you have arterial fibrillation, then you should measure it three times, because with arrhythmia, the heart trembles as it were. Now it's beating stronger, now the beat is weak. So you repeat the same thing three times, once, then relax, in five minutes the second time, and then the third time. Then you calculate the average, and there you have the correct reading for your pressure. That's for those with arrhythmia. 
Okay, what else is important for interpretation? The first thing was to measure properly. Of course, you don't take the pressure immediately after you've been physically active. You need to give yourself at least half an hour to calm down. Second, don't measure your BP right after you wake up. You've been asleep, you woke up, some people do it, my patients share that with me. As soon as you wake up in the morning, the body is still half asleep, but you get up, grab the device from your bedside cabinet, and you rush to measure the pressure right there and then. You can't do this. Get up, go to the bathroom, brush your teeth, have a cup of tea, and before breakfast measure your pressure. Then you eat, have breakfast, and then measure your pressure again. And the average of the two will be your morning pressure, that's it. Because after breakfast, the pressure drops for most people. This is due to the fact that the autonomic nervous system kicks into action, the parasympathetic part of it, the so-called nervous vagus, which activates when the food enters the stomach. The nerve initiates the expansion of blood vessels throughout the body, and this in turn decreases the pressure, normalizing it. So, you need to take that into account, too. The same thing holds good for other situations too, say a man sleeps at night, in the middle of the night he feels sick, he wakes himself up because he is shaking all over. It feels like a hypertensive crisis, so what do you usually do? You immediately rush to measure your pressure. Don't do this. No matter how bad you feel, get up, take at least five minutes, walk around, try to calm down. Even better if you can get out onto your porch or balcony or open your window, take in some fresh air. Because it happens that the pressure rises due to other reasons. Say it's very hot in the apartment in winter because the central heating is on way too high. So oxygen is consumed much more actively by the body, and there is less of it left in the room. So your brain, and we talked about this in my previous lecture, reacts to any lack of oxygen by increasing pressure. If you simply open the window when you realize the heating is set on way too high, and then continue to sleep with the open window, you'll be fine. Or you get really scared and read the crisis into your readings and rush to call for an ambulance and get some powerful shot of a medication that you don't need. They'll bring your pressure down, in fact so low that later in the morning you'll have 80 by 50, and you won't be able to get out of bed at all, and you will lie all day like a rag on your your sofa. So don't do that. Thank you, Vadim. We'll let you go now. Dear viewers of our blog, I recommend watching all our videos. We try to give both practice and theory on managing your hypertension or hypertension syndrome, as I call it. And I'm sure you'll appreciate much more detailed information about the things important to you. We do have the details. There are special courses, there are special programs that you can order and fight this disease. Stay healthy. You've been watching Dr. Shishanin. So long. Subscribe to our channel and never miss a new video. Click subscribe under this video. Once you clicked it, you are subscribed. Click or tap the bell to receive notifications about our new videos to your email. Click on All to receive all notifications. In the description below, you will find the links to all the projects by Dr. Shoshanin. Dr. Shoshanin's Club for X Patients. Dr. Shoshanin's Videos. Set up an appointment for a free consultation at the clinic and stay healthy.